everyone, Ryan Jackson here, and I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the 100 days of the 2023 changes to the National Electrical Code. We're going to talk about generators over the next two videos. This one will cover 445.18, disconnecting means, and the next video will cover 445.19, which is emergency shutdown of the prime mover. Both of those used to be in the same section and boy, it got really confusing trying to determine which one you're trying to deal with. So we broke it up into two sections and I think they did a really nice job with this. So let's dive in to 445.18 and see what the disconnect requirements are. So 445.18 disconnecting means, the rules for the generator's disconnecting means were clarified. And I think they made some nice clarifications here. 445.18a disconnect. Generators must have a lockable disconnecting means that opens all ungrounded conductors simultaneously. All right, the, the rule for disconnecting means does not require the engine of the generator to be shut down. All right, it requires the wires leaving the generator to be able to be shut off. It doesn't matter if the engine is still on, we just want the wires leaving the generators to be off. That's the disconnect. Now, we're going to find out in the next video that there are applications where I have to shut off the engine of the generator, the prime mover, and that's 4045.19. So right now we're just talking about an electrical disconnect, not a mechanical engine shutdown. So got to have a lockable disconnect, opens all ungrounded conductors simultaneously. Here in the photograph, we've got a big old switch that shuts off the wires leaving the generator. It should be pretty easy to walk up to it and put a padlock on it. It appears that this installation is compliant. We've got our disconnect, we're good to go. The disconnecting means can be inside the generator and oftentimes it is. Uh, it can also be inside the generator behind a, a hinge door or a cover. Well, nice clarification because a lot of people would say, well, no, if it's behind there, then that doesn't comply. Well, absolutely it does. But if the disconnect is inside the generator behind a, a, a hinge door, then signage that requires what the general signage requirements must indicate its location. And again, I think this is also a really good rule. I like being able to know where the disconnect is. So put it inside the equipment, fine. Just tell me that. Let me know so I'm not going on an Easter egg hunt. So there's my sticker that says generator disconnect inside. Beautiful thing. The last thing that they did is they clarified the rules for generators in parallel. Now, what I'm showing here in the photograph is a tiebreaker, or what we call a main tie main. And what a main tie main is, is when we have two different sources of power. It could be two transformers, it could be two generators, or one of each, or what have you. But a main tie main is, a lot of times we'll use it if we have two loads and we have two sources, but we want to be able to use either source to supply power to both loads. And that way we can take one offline, whether it's intentional or unintentional. You know, if something bad happens to the generator, then this generator can carry both loads and vice versa with this one carrying this, these two. Or we can tie them together and have them operate in parallel. Maybe we're operating them in parallel just to get the extra capacity from the generator. So this is a main tie main. 445.18 generators in parallel talks about the rules for a main time main. It says if the generator is in parallel with others, then the disconnect must be capable of isolating the generator from the paralleling bus and can be remote from the generator. All right, so there you go. The, the concept of having a disconnect for the generator is to what? To disconnect the electrical, disconnect the wires coming from the generator. So yeah, if I've got a main time main, it might require a little bit more ingenuity to do it. We just want to be able to isolate the generator from the paralleling bus because that is basically its load. So there you have it, 445.18. We'll talk about the prime mover disconnect and the prime mover shutdown in 445.19, which is the next video. See you then.